Now that BlizzCon 2019 has ended, and we're finally back home, there is so much to discuss. We aren't even sure where to begin, really. As I did last year, I plan to make a detailed overview of the entire convention, our experience, what we learned, and so on and so on. But in this video, I actually want to give my initial reaction to the announcement of the new WoW expansion Shadowlands, and talk about my gameplay experience in the demo, where I of course played a paladin. A Blood Elf Paladin, actually. And Pasta and I were discussing, we're kinda thinking of rolling Horde for Shadowlands. We're not 100% sure yet, but it would be nice to change things up again. The leveling experience looks pretty promising so far, and I'm very optimistic about what they've revealed to us. My first reaction was that they've pulled a lot of inspiration from WoW Classic, or so it seemed. Bringing back the value of each level in your journey to level 60 reigniting class identity by bringing things back like paladin auras, shaman totems, rogue poisons, warlock curses, schools of magic, and much, much more. There's still so much we don't know and haven't learned yet, but it's going to be a very exciting year leading up to the release date as new details slowly emerge. But as for right now, I mainly want to go over my experience playing the demo at BlizzCon while it's still fresh on my mind. Players were able to create a level 50 character and got to explore and complete quests inside Bastion. So here are my thoughts playing the demo of Bastion as a Blood Elf Paladin. Bastion is a bright, serene, tranquil zone. The music around the starting area reminded me of the Shatrath music from Burning Crusade, like an equivalent of heaven for World of Warcraft. We had the opportunity to attend the World of Warcraft group interview with Frank Kolkowski, technical director on World of Warcraft, and Steve Aguilar, assistant art director on World of Warcraft where Steve explained in a bit more detail about the art concepts of Bastion. We've been going back and forth with it. Um, we're still working with some of the lighting in there. It's not final. Um, we're trying to really pull off when the player enters this zone. It's something that's very glorious and serene, kind of like this is the zone that is the, the heavenly plains or fields of, you know, of heaven. You know, so um, this is Warcraft's version of, of heaven. Uh, at least for this particular zone. So, but yeah, we're looking at it. So in the Shadowlands, heroes will journey into the realm of the dead, AKA the Shadowlands, after Sylvanas teared open the veil between life and death above Ice Crown, as we saw in the cinematic. Players will meet covenants as they explore the realms in the Shadowlands. And the first stop is the spiritual realm of Bastion. The Kyrians are the noble inhabitants of Bastion, but they are described as wingless beings who train for aeons to one day earn their wings and join the ranks of the Ascended. There's also stewards on the Bastion Plain. They're born of the magic of death. They're otherworldly groundskeepers and guardians to keep Bastion pristine. And this is a new character model that Pasta and I were very excited to see. They kind of look like a mashup between Boomkins and Dwarves. So it looks like they took the Dwarven models and textured it with Boomkins. Really cool. So other denizens of Bastion include the Forsworn, which are souls that were once bright, but have become darkened and lost, so they wander around the plains of Bastion to lament. We also have the Centurions, a legion of anima-fueled automations that drill Kyrian aspirants in meditative combat as well as defend Bastion. There's Praetors, Goliaths, and Colossuses found throughout the zone. We also have Manifestations, so as the Kyrians shed the burdens of their past lives, physical manifestations of their tormented thoughts are expelled from their bodies. Only by striking them down can the Kyrian cleanse themselves and achieve ascendance. And these are just a few of the entities that you will encounter while in Bastion. And the Kyrian Covenant. Kyrian of Bastion is the covenant that holds domain over this zone, whose discipline and duty compels them to safeguard souls from the mortal realm as they pass into the Shadowlands. So once a player does reach max level and has explored all these zones within Shadowlands, they'll be able to pledge themselves to a covenant, like the Kyrian. And in the press conference that we attended, they compared that to the Order Hall from Legion. And here's a sound clip from the uh, exact quote. Uh, think of it more akin to an Order Hall, like from, from Legion. So it's a place you're going to want to visit very often. That's going to be your, your base of kind of like launching out in, into the world for uh, Covenant related things. Uh, but there's still going to be Orbos, the city in the middle, that's, that's going to be like the Dalaran of, uh, of the expansion. So there's going to be a lot, that's, you know, a lot of profession trainers and all of those things will be kind of huddled around in there. So more analogous to, to kind of the situation we had in Legion with Order Halls. And went into a little bit more detail as to whether or not you can change Covenants if you so desire. As you level all the way from Bastion to Revendreth, 
uh, in, in the game. You're going to come across each covenant. You're going to learn a little bit about their story. That's going to help you make an informed decision about maybe thematically which one you want to align with. Uh, but also for people who are primarily interested in those abilities, while you're in those zones, they're going to grant you access to those abilities. So you're going to be able to try like that passive movement and that active ability before you get to maximum level uh, so that you can make a more informed decision at that time when you choose your covenant. Um, that said, if you choose later on that you're like, yeah, maybe maybe I don't want to be a Revendreth, I want to be a Arden Wield, I want to join the Arden Wield Covenant, you'll be able to do that. Uh, it'll be more similar to how maybe in Burning Crusade you picked the Aldor, and then at some point said, you know what, I actually want to be a Scryer. Uh, it wasn't an easy choice, um, you know, and there was some work to do, but uh, that we wanted to be more along those lines. You'll also find Valkyr statues, fountains, floating pillars, blue, blue sky, thin, wispy clouds. Some of them were so angelic looking, like in the shape of wings. I also got to test out dying. You witness your normal death animation, but once you click release spirit, there's a black holish white explosion of light, then an implosion of black and white where you then appear as an essence, like a ghostly flame in the shape of a spirit. There's no body or wisp, no traditional death music, and the world becomes blurry. I also tested out res sickness. It was 30 seconds at level 50. I'm not sure if that was the thing just on the demo, but something worth noting. Just to give some further note on the methodology behind that, Frank Kolkowski, when asked during the interview, stated, we, we did understand that it didn't make a lot of sense to just do the same thing we do in Azeroth. So yeah, we did come up with that special unique effect to connect your soul back to your, uh, to your body for specifically for Shadowlands. Other than that, questing and moving around didn't feel too different from the last time I had played BFA. The spell animations are really nice and uh, something that I'm not used to because I've been playing classic for the past two months, so it was refreshing to see the updated spell animations. They're really nice visually. I took a bit of a look at my spellbook tab. All my previous writing skills were learned. Now during the group interview that we attended, they did address a little bit about flying and here's the sound clip of it. Much like today, when I, whatever level we set flying at. Yeah, uh, so if I go to Warlords of Draenor and I'm at a flyable level and I've already unlocked Pathfinder, I should be able to do flying. My paladin weapon skills were still axes, maces, pole arms, and swords, but no weapon training skill like there is in Classic. I didn't actually expect them to bring back weapon training skills, but just something that uh, was worth noting and checking out. I couldn't view an achievement or collection tab as they were grayed out for the demo, but they were still present in the game. So I know it's not much, I only got to play for about 10 or 15 minutes, but those were my first impressions on playing Shadowlands. Again, I want to restate that I'm very optimistic so far in what information they've shared with us. As a big classic person myself, it sounds like they've taken a lot of inspiration to transform WoW into more of an MMORPG again, focusing on the RPG, leveling element, itemization, and just overall improving the quality of the player experience as they level up and travel throughout the zones. What's funny is my friend Melderon from Def Camp and Melderon had asked about how much influence Classic actually had on the upcoming expansion, and the answer was a little bit different from what I expected. Here's the sound clip. Uh, that's a good question. Um... All of the, a lot of those decisions were actually made long before Classic actually launched. Like the, the level squish is something we've talked about for a long time. And the, the primary motivation behind that was, uh, you know, as a new player, you look uh, at your friends and they have that number 120 in front of them the day you log in. That's very intimidating. Uh, if I want to go get my, uh, you know, heritage armor, you know, even though you only need to go one, to 110, that's, that's still very intimidating as, as maybe a, a, a Void Elf or something like that. There's a lot of levels in, in the game just to step at it up over the years. And one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that those levels matter as well. Uh, so when you're going from, from 10 to 50, for instance, you'll be, able to, you'll be picking up talents, you'll be picking up spells, you'll be, you know, you'll be unlocking content. Um, and the, the other aspect of the level squish we really wanted to address and, and the leveling in general was that sense that I'm kind of just a tourist through the world as, I, as I'm leveling up. And it feels cool if we've already been through all of those expansions and we grow organically over the last 15 years to kind of get that a beat of going back to each expansion saying, yeah, I remember Wrath, I remember Mists, uh, but you never really get to go very far before you move on to the next one. So the other thing we wanted to do was, was make sure the players had an opportunity to play all the way through an expansion. So you can, if you really like Wrath of the Lich King, you know, you're gonna finally get to see Ice Crown before you, before you out-level the content. And that was, that was important to us as well because uh, you know, there's, there's usually a level of story associated with each expansion and we want players to be able to see that.
As they've stated many times, there's still a lot of work to be done, and many things have not been fully addressed yet. So I really look forward to keeping up with the latest news and updates. Maybe even alpha, beta, or PTR gameplay in the near future. I remember when they announced BFA, I was able to play the alpha sometime around March. So if I had to guess, I'd say the alpha would be available within the next several months. But we'll see. There's so much information that we learned at BlizzCon, and this was the first content that I wanted to get out there. Overall, I think choosing Bastion as the starting demo zone to view at BlizzCon was a good decision. It's a bright, otherworldly, pleasant zone. But make no mistake, there will be other zones inside the Shadowlands that are not as happy, calm, and bright. And I really look forward to learning more about these zones as more information becomes available. Another aspect of World of Warcraft that I love from every expansion is the soundtrack. No matter how much I enjoyed the content of a particular expansion itself, I've always been a huge fan of the music. So that's another thing I really look forward to discovering as time goes on. The art department never seems to disappoint in that regard. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you can keep up to date with all of my latest video releases. You could also follow on Twitter at QuissyTV, and don't forget to check out my live stream at QuissyTV over on Twitch. I want to thank you guys for watching this video, give it a thumbs up if you like it, and please let me know in the comments section below what other kinds of information you'd like to learn about my BlizzCon experience. There's definitely more to come, so stay tuned!